Two weeks ago, we started creating videos on how to make monk strap shoes. We started with the pattern. You will not believe my eyes when I tell you, guess what has happened? What has happened is that we are almost done and I can't wait to tell you all about it. But first of all, let's start with fixing the buckle. Now, this is something that people who make sandals know that I think is also very important for those of us who exclusively make shoes. And that is that when you have buckles to install in your pair of shoes, you should use an elastic rather than leather in fixing those buckles. Like this pair of monk strap shoes that I'm making, you see that I'm using an elastic, but in my choice of elastic, I've also chosen elastic that it's exactly the same color as the pair of shoes that I'm making. So if I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't even know that it is elastic instead of leather. Why do you need elastic? So that all those tug, all those pulls and tugs on the buckle when it is being fixed and being released the elastic absorbs all that shock and it doesn't affect the structural integrity of the shoe or the buckle itself speaking of structural integrity you see that i fixed it such that when the shoe is ultimately made and finished you look into the inside of the shoe you wouldn't see all of that fixing you probably just see lining covering all of that so that's something you also have to pay attention to in fixing your buckles you fix it such that the dirty structural things are out of sight and then what the customer gets to see is beautiful lining and beautiful uppers and that of course brings me to the point of how do you close up your linings after you are done with your uppers that's what we're going to do here on in. So as you can see, I basically trim that excess by the side such that it conforms with the pattern. The one on the side of the quarters, I leave as it is until I finish off with my glue work. So I'm going to lift up that side where we cut the notch into the quarters, add some glue to that notch area and bring it down. Then I'm going to add some glue also to the part that corresponds with the stitching allowance. But to do that, I'll first of all bring this vamp side of the lining down and just make a tracing of that pattern so that I have the exact point where the stitching allowance is supposed to be. And then I can add my glue just um, a width of 1 cm away from that line and then I'll go ahead and add glue to the corresponding side of the vamp lining as well and with that I'll just leave it to dry and while I'm waiting for it to dry I can just go ahead and do exactly the same process on the other side but before I attach lining to lining i'll cut off this excess that you see right here so you see that this is this is not the only way of fixing your linings but this is the most intuitive way um, you're not having to do any separate design for the lining you can basically adapt the design of your uppers to the design to use as the design of your lining so that way, um, you see that the lining is separate from the uppers and it gives you enough room and enough clearance to add your stiffness when you want to do that. So closing of our lining is done. Now let's go to lasting. Lasting, of course, starts with skiving of your stiffness, your toe puff and your back counter stiffness, a.k.a. the front stay and the back stay. So you skive the edges of all of those. In in this case, I'm using fiber um, stiffness. You can use leather um, or you can use that heat activated material that I typically don't use. You guys see that I've already lasted the first of the pair of this mock strap. So let's go ahead and last the second one. Lasting, the actual process of lasting is something that I have discussed in very many recent videos. So I'm not going to be running commentaries on this particular video i will just point out what i'm doing let's go first nail or first tack at the 12 o'clock position second nail or second tack 
at the 10 o'clock position then you go over to the two o'clock position for your third nail or your third tack and then at the nine o'clock position your fourth nail and then at the three o'clock position your fifth nail or your fifth tack as the case may be depending on what you're using then you pull the back down to the back height and put your sixth nail in this case i shocked it with two other nails by the side but those are not necessary and then you pull only at the lining at the four o'clock position i added two just for extra and then you roll over to the other side pull at the eight o'clock position and add your eight nail or eight tap in this case i also added two with that your eight cardinal nails are done you can simply just remove all of the tacks going forward and fine tune things just to ensure that everything particularly the lining really you are trying to ensure that everything um stays where it's supposed to be and your lasting is very well done with that all that remains is just doing some glue work to hold the lining in and then you can add your stiffness all of that i'm not going to be doing in this video being that i have really discussed them in very very granular details in earlier videos that i published um just about a couple of weeks ago so you see that i can pull up all of the upper and you know fixing my stiffness um, as i want so all of that will get done but i'll just show you the end result i'll stop running commentaries at this point and get ready to go to work while you guys enjoy the rest of the video right so i'll catch you on the next one um, until we come around again god bless you stay healthy peace be upon you